Good afternoon, and welcome to Our Lady Star of the Sea. Today we are celebrating the Most Holy Trinity. Please stand and join in singing our opening hymn, song number 20 in today's missile. All hail, adored Trinity, song number 20 in today's missile.
education, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the Trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in its majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name. Lord, Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, Yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord.
loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Here it is. Today, uh, this mystery that we celebrate is really the central mystery of our faith, belief in the Trinity, the one who creates us, the one who redeems us, and the one who sanctifies us. When I was teaching at the University of St. Thomas, I taught the Trinity course, and it was 16 weeks, 3 hours a week, but I promise you I'll be brief. <laughs> G.K. Chesterton, he wrote this once, that his belief in Christianity was because of the doctrine of the Trinity. He said if Christianity had been made up by humans, it would not have had at its center a concept that is impossible to grasp or explain. The idea that God exists in three in one person, or, sorry, one is one substance in three persons. And, and the truth is that this is not made up. This has been the result of our understanding of the Trinity as a result of what has been revealed to us, first to the chosen people, revealed to them and to today's reading, to Moses. Moses once again goes before God and he comes back, he's coming back from the experience of his people having worshipped the golden calf and at that time he shattered all the, the two tablets with the commandments on it out of his disgust for the people. And he, God calls him back up, he drinks two new tablets, and God stands before him, and once again reveals his name as Lord. And not just as Lord, but what kind of Lord this is. He reveals the self as the Lord, the Lord who is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and rich in kindness and faithfulness. And this is the experience, not only for Moses, but the chosen people. As they were unfaithful from time to time, God was always faithful to them, slow to anger, rich in kindness and faithfulness. And it's that experience that we come to know God the Father. And then what happens is in the course of salvation history, remember Jesus himself was a Jew, all of his disciples were Jews, and good believing Jews. And in any case, they had the experience of discovery of the divinity in Jesus, not merely through his preaching, not merely through his teaching or healing people or forgiving sins and, and, and making miracles, causing miracles. They discover his divinity in the resurrection. And no longer did they call him master, they called him Lord, a word that was reserved for the one true living God. And they came to recognize him as son of God in that experience of the resurrection. No longer were they disciples, now they became believers. And it is the experience of the preaching of the church that people come to know about Jesus and this resurrection the one who conquers sin and death, they're not making it up. They're recognizing it and discovering it in their own experience. And then Jesus promises to send that Holy Spirit, and that Spirit that comforts us, that consoles us, the Spirit that enlivens our hearts and guides us in the way of truth, enables us to recognize uh, what is true to our faith, and it's in that recognition, in that experience, once again, they come to realize that this is the Spirit sent by the Father and the Son for them. 
in the absence of Jesus' presence on earth. And we see today in the early, one of the earliest Trinitarian formulations in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, as he writes, the grace of Jesus the Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we say that virtually the beginning of every Mass. And so that this is not something that was made up by church fathers. It is, the core of it is right here in the New Testament. And it comes from God revealing himself as being three persons, but yet one God existing from all eternity as Father and Son, relating to one another in a relationship of love from all eternity. And it's made manifest to us here on earth in the incarnation, as well as the gift of the Holy Spirit. So what's so important to us that we have been created? What's so important to us is that we have been created in the image and likeness of God, a God who is supremely relational, relational within the self, the self, Father and Son united in the spirit of love. We have been created as relational beings, not to be alone, but to be in a relationships, to be in relationships that are characterized by loving concern for one another and loving care for one another. Because this is who God has created us to be. Not only to be in relationship with himself, but to be in relationship with others. The church, in Vatican II's document on, on the, uh, the church, it's, it speaks about the Holy Spirit, that the unity of the church is to reflect the unity within the Trinity. Perfect equality, oneness, united in love, but that love moves us, the spirit of love moves us beyond the church into the world and to have loving concern for our neighbor. And as you know from the Good Samaritan, we are the neighbor to everyone. Our belief in the Blessed Trinity is the soul of our concern for one another, our quest for justice so that we can indeed come and reflect uh, sorry, so that, we, so that we can reflect that unity of the Trinity, persons existing in perfect unity. And when we talk about justice, justice leads to unity, and justice is for all people of every color and every branch. And the church's work, our own work on behalf of justice, it, it certainly includes this. But to remember, it's related to the Trinity, who has created us, redeemed us, given us his spirit, it's the spirit of truth, the spirit of justice, the spirit of wisdom, and for us to live that love and to reflect the unity of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, bound together from all eternity in love. Now as we profess our faith, I'm going to do it in the form of a question. Questions. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Amen. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. This is our faith, this is the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Assured of the love and compassion of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we call to mind our needs and raise up our prayers to God. 
that all who are baptized in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit live out our, co our call to holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear That people of all nations may treat God's creation and all its people as holy and worthy of care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the people of our nation reflect the Trinity's communion of love, keeping in mind we are all one human race. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the love of God poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit may bring peace and comfort to all those who suffer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community find the strength to mend our ways and live in peace, supporting and lifting up our needy brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead may receive the reward of eternal life, especially Ryan Barnett, Rita Quinn, and Lucio Balané. May they be admitted to the company of the saints, and may those who mourn their loss be comforted. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pause for a moment of silence to pray for the needs we hold close to our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord Triumph God, you reveal yourself to your people through your wisdom, truth, and love. You have taken delight in the human race and poured out your love into our human hearts. Hear the prayers of those you love and grant them in your holy name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we prepare the table of the Lord, please join in singing song number 38. Let all mortal flesh keep silent. Song number 38. Son and His Holy Spirit, you are the one God, one Lord, 
not in the unity of a single person, but in a, 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 a trinity of one substance. For what you have re revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this, for this is praised by the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim. They never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. Life. 
give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now with trust and confidence we pray to our Heavenly Father as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the power and the glory of your Son, our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer to those of us an appropriate sign of peace. Just a reminder, just a reminder of the communion procession is that for the, the wings are going to receive communion first and the, and the body of the church will remain in place until that's been accomplished. We'll have two uh, Eucharistic ministers in the back and then I'll be in the center here and then when uh, Bill and the other the wing people are going to come for it, my wing people, can you imagine? <laughs> anyway. Uh, and so that's how we'll do it. So you remain seated until the wings have about finished.
though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join us singing our communion hymn, song number 338. One more
So um, remember to take all your belongings, including the missalettes that you received today. They're yours to keep and to cherish and to use. So let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O oh Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us and keep us this night and bring us to our beds in peace, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us walk this week in the light and in the love of Christ Jesus. As we go to serve the Lord, please join in singing song number 22, Holy God, we praise thy name, song number 22 in today's missile. 